Good morning. Well, we're glad that you're here and that the rain did not keep you away this morning. Um, I invite you to go with me before the Lord's throne of grace as we dedicate this service of worship to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the gift of this day and for the privilege of gathering here in worship of you. We ask you to come and to meet us where we are, to pour out your spirit upon us as we've gathered here to offer to you the gift of our worship. And as we receive from you the gift of your love, may all that we offer to you today, Lord, be a blessed offering. Father, come and meet with us. It's in the transforming, saving name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray and we dedicate our service of worship to you. Amen. Good morning. It is good to see everyone here this morning. If you happen to be a guest with us this morning, we just want to tell you how much we appreciate you worshiping with us. If you're a guest for the first time, we want to make sure that you get a lot of information that will tell you about the many things that happen in this church. So uh, if this is your first visit, please, before you leave this morning, step into the narthex. And at the desk there, just give us your name and address. Later this week, someone will stop by your home. They will deliver a mug that is filled with that information. We do have so many ways that we serve God, we serve our community, and we serve one another, and we want you to know all about those. We hope that you'll just keep coming back over and over again. So do that for us and let us, let us get that information to you. Um, if the attendance pads have not been passed, do that now. If someone new has come into your row, pass them one more time because we do like to know who's here. Uh, when you sign your name to let us know that you're here, we're going to be able to figure out who wasn't able to be here and we can stay in touch with everyone. So if you will help us with that, we'd appreciate it. If you will open your bulletins to the ministry opportunities and events, there's some that I, I would like to announce that aren't listed in the bulletin, and that I will begin with uh, the pledges for 2013. If you haven't had a chance to turn your pledge in for 2013, um, if you could do that pretty quick, we are wanting to get that, that budget put together. Uh, we need to know how we can spend our money, and you can help us do that if you will just do your, your part. If you've lost your pledge card, we've got them out in the narthex. You can pick one up. Call the office. We'll be glad to help you in any way that we can. There are two special uh, worship opportunities that will be happening in the next two weeks. And the first one is going to be this Friday night on December 14th at 6.30 in the sanctuary. There is going to be a special service uh, for special needs, children and adults. And so we hope that you will come and participate in that. In another week on Friday, December the 21st at 7 o'clock, there is going to be a service that is named the Longest Night Service. And that, again, is going to be in the sanctuary. This is for people who may be having a tough time as they're going through the holidays. Uh, we do make it a special service, and we hope that if, if you'd like to come, that you also might find someone, that this would be a perfect time for them to come to church and get some special prayers and some special, a special worship service just for them. So we hope that you will do that as well. Um, it didn't get in the bulletin that the Faith Five Shepherd Group will meet for breakfast this Friday, the 14th at 9 o'clock at the Acropolis Restaurant. And please contact Mickey Black or Eunice Albers to make your reservation for that. The United Methodist men are having their special ladies' night dinner this Wednesday at 6.30. Today is the last day to sign up for tickets, so if you haven't done that yet, there will be someone from the United Methodist men out in the narthex right after this service, and you can get your tickets at that time. There's going to be a Christmas parents' shopping day out sponsored by our youth ministry and that's going to take place this Saturday from 4 until 7 o'clock. They're going to provide supper for the kids. They're going to have all kinds of activities. The kids will bring home some completed uh, projects that they've worked on and all to give parents or grandparents uh, just a little bit of time off and a little bit of, of relaxation or Three hours of shopping, whatever, whatever suits you. So sign up for that in the church office, and today is the deadline to sign up for that as well. 
Pack-A-Sack is coming up. It's always the third Sunday of the month. It's coming up next Sunday. The group that we're going to be giving all of the donations that you bring in is going to be the Northwest Arkansas Children's Shelter. And they have asked not only just for your uh, non-perishable food items, but also food for infants. So any food that you bring in plus food for infants, uh, we want to make a, a good offering to them in this month of December. You can still get poinsettias, and I think you can still order today for a poinsettia. Go to the office to do that, and they will give you all of the details there. Toys for Tots is a very, very worthy organization. Our children's ministry is uh, wanting to help with that, and so we're asking that anyone who can bring an unwrapped, unwrapped child's gift to the church by December 19th and place it in the Toys for Tots box that is right outside of Becker Hall, that would be appreciated. And with that, let's just have a wonderful worship service this morning. Thank you. As we stand together this morning, let us join in our affirmation of faith. It's found here in your bulletin and also on our screens. 
It's our Apostles' Creed this morning. Let us join together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in life everlasting. Amen. God is good. And all the time. We're glad that you're here and we need you to help us make sure everyone is made to feel welcome. Will you greet those around you? Maybe you, there's somebody that you've never met before and you can meet them today. Make sure everyone is made to feel welcome in God's name. I need your help. How are you? Our Advent journey continues as we get ready to meet the promised Lord in love. I am reading from Malachi 3, verses 1 through 4. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant, whom you desire, will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness, and the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord, as in days gone by, as in former years. As we light the second candle, we are reminded that we must prepare our hearts and our minds. God prepares the way for all to be saved together. We anticipate the day of his coming. Let us pray. 
Lord of hosts, you are coming to purify our hearts and refine us so that we may be pleasing, living offerings to you. As we joyfully prepare ourselves for the arrival of the Christ, may we bring honor and glory to your name, and may we prepare the way for others to meet you. In your name we pray.
I'm reading from 1 John 4, verses 7 through 12. Listen to the word of God. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Pam. I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward now for a time of tithes and offerings. As we gather together each Sunday for worship, and at other times when we worship, we offer back to God some of the gifts that God has given us, some of the blessings of this life that we have been given. I pray that we give back in joy. We give back to our church, to our community, and we remember to give to all those around us, knowing that we are all children of God, loved and cherished. If you have very little, or if you just would like to remember those who struggle around the world, I ask that you give a dollar. A dollar knowing that so many live on so little. A dollar in remembrance of how we are blessed and how others struggle.
most gracious and loving God, please bless this offering that has been received today. Multiply it and use it for your kingdom and for your glory, for your people and for your creation. Lord, thank you for this time. May it be a blessing to you and in your Holy Son. Amen. I invite you to be seated. As you're taking your seats, if you would, take note of the insert in your bulletin. It's the slim insert. It has our celebrations, our cares, and our concerns on it this morning. I want to make note that there's a pink rosebud here in the chancel on the altar this morning. It's in celebration of the birth of Gracelyn Marie Sebrant, who was born on November 29th, and she is the great-grandchild of Bill and Aggie Danhauer. So if you see Bill and Aggie, congratulate them on their first grand great-grandchild, and we want to keep that child and the family in our prayers as we go through this week. If you would, remember those that are listed here, particularly ask those that you remember those that are in the hospital. Liz Scarf and Sharon Galloway have both been in the hospital most of this past week, so we ask that you pray for them if you have been praying to continue to pray as, as they are struggling with different things. Um, please remember them in your prayers. Please remember our church in your prayers. Remember one another. We ask that you remember to pray for and, and help with our, our worship times and different things that we do here. We have had a wonderful year of, of worshiping on television and also through the Internet, through our technology ministry, and those are growing. We're impacting lives that are not able to be here with us but are watching us through the different technology that we provide. So we ask that you pray for that ministry as you go about your week. Remember the Village Baptist Church. We 
would like to remember all the families of faith here in our community that worship with us on Sunday mornings and worship at other times. As you drive about our community, not just Bella Vista, but here around northwest Arkansas and around our country and the world, remember to pray for all those folks that are part of our church, that worship with us on all the different times, all of our holidays. But pray for one another and pray for all that we do. As we go through the holiday season, we are having several special worship services. One, that, or several that Jan mentioned, but one is coming up this Friday. I would like to ask that you pray for it. It is a worship service that we've not done here before. It's a, a special needs ministry. It's a special needs service that we're going to have at 6.30 on Friday night. It will be in Becker Hall. It's a worship service that hopefully will meet the needs of many people in our community. And we ask that you pray for that service, but also if you as you meet people around the community, invite them. And let them know that we are having this service. We'll be letting people know in the different agencies and different schools around the northwest Arkansas. But we asked if you'd like to, you're certainly welcome, and to bring a friend and experience a worship service that's a little bit different. We have a video this morning that our United Methodist Church has put out that I'd like you to watch. It's a very short video, but it gives you a little bit of an idea of how this type of worship service might be held and the people that it will impact. Sue Miller helped start the Rejoicing Spirits Ministry at Central United Methodist Church in Lenore City, Tennessee, almost two years ago. Church members saw a chance to help families with developmentally delayed adults find acceptance. They don't know what their loved one might say or do, and of course they don't want them to be embarrassed, and, and so they just don't come. Rejoicing Spirits made a difference. William has Down syndrome. Here, his shyness disappears, dancing and even helping Pastor Ron share a reading. The time of singing has come. Each service ends with a familiar song of celebration. The song underscores a message. That they're loved, they can be themselves. They're children of God. Remember this service and many of our other services we have throughout the holidays and beyond. Remember to pray for each of them. If we would now, let us prepare for our prayer this morning in song. Gracious God, thank you for this time of worship this morning. Thank you for blessing us with your presence, with your love and with your grace. Remind us of how you are with us, how you hold us in this time, how you lift us forward and into ministry throughout your creation. Healing God, we lift up so many in our community who are ill who are in our hospitals, the rehabilitation facilities, those who struggle at home with illnesses undiagnosed. This morning, love, Lord, we particularly lift up Sharon and Liz. We lift them up in their struggles and ask for your healing touch to take over their bodies, to bring them back to health, and to bring them home to us. Lord, thank you for this ministry that we have, for the lives that are touched. And God, we pray that you would change all of our hearts, soften our hearts so that we would truly understand the tremendous blessings of your love. Change us through your grace. Give us the faith 
to be your people, to be your church, to grow and to change, to love all of your children, and to love all those around us. Lord, we ask your blessings on each of us this morning. Heal us of the hurts that we have. Calm our minds and free us from the troubles of the day. Bless Brother Jamie as he brings our message. May we listen and be changed and reminded of all that we have. All these things we pray in your Son's most holy and precious name and as we have been taught to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As Jan has already mentioned, I want to remind you about the Advent devotional that is provided for you on a weekly basis. This week, the theme of our sermon series is called The Gift of Love. And the devotionals in this week's devotion follow that theme. You may be getting these electronically by email, or you can also find them on our Facebook page. So maybe you don't need a paper copy. But still, you could pick one up and pass it on and give it to somebody else that may benefit from knowing about God and God's love through His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I encourage you to pick one of these up. They are located in the narthex in a basket on, on the desk beside the chrismon tree. So be sure and pick one up as you leave this morning. Have you ever forgotten to buy a gift for somebody for Christmas? You know, they absolutely, it slipped your mind. You've had, they show up at the house. <laughs> And then you scamper and scurry and you try to find something to give to them. Or you, you get a call from them and they say, Hey, I want to come by and give you something. And you're thinking, I wasn't even going planning to give them anything. And then you have to come up with something to give them. We've all been in those situations. I know I have as a pastor where one member of a family has invited me to come home with them for, for dinner or something and they're going to exchange gifts and the other members when I get there are just absolutely embarrassed that I've walked through the door and I can tell that they have scrapped together some little nothing gift to give to me and I'm sorry that they've ever felt that the pressure to have to worry about that but you know I've, I've done the same thing the very first church where I served we had a, just a little bitty staff and I was going to have a staff lunch and a Christmas lunch and the parsonage and so I didn't have much money and and I lived pretty frugally and I had I had saved to buy people gifts and to buy the groceries and I had a place set at the table for everybody that was expected but the phone rang before the lunch and it was the secretary she wanted to know if she could bring a friend to lunch and what was I going to tell her no I said sure bring her on and then I thought I've got to have a gift for her. Her name was Connie. So I looked over in my house and tried to find a gift. And finally, all I could find, something that hadn't been used, was a sad-looking little Christmas dish towel and pot holder. And I wrapped it up. I didn't have a box to put it in. I wrapped it up just in Christmas paper and put a bow on it, put it under the tree with the other gifts so it would look like I was so prepared. We had lunch, and after lunch, I passed out the gifts. Now, those gifts that I gave intentionally, they were pretty nice gifts. I, I knew the person and their personality and, and what they would like. And, and so those gifts worked. And I gave Connie her little dish towel. And she opened it up. And she acted like she was happy over that dish towel. And we had our, um, finished the day and we went on our merry little way. Well, by the next Christmas... I'd been reappointed to move to a new church. 
St. Paul in Fort Smith. These are my St. Paul friends right here. And um, I would, every day I would go to the mailbox and expectantly look forward to receiving Christmas cards. Well, one day I went and there was a little package. And it was from Connie. It had her name on the outside. And I hurried into the house with my package and I opened it up. And there in the box was that same little sad dish towel that I had given her. In fact, after the first service, when I told that story, someone went and got me a sad little Christmas dish towel and gave to me. And in fact, I really think it looks better than the one I gave to Connie. Sometimes things are just forgotten, aren't they? Sometimes even persons in the Christmas story are forgotten or or they're an afterthought. Today we're reading about Joseph. And so I invite you to take your Bibles if you brought them from home, if you'd like to follow along in the Pew Bible. And we're reading in Matthew's Gospel in the first chapter, verses 18 through 25. And I'm reading out of the NIV translation. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph before they came together. And she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So, will, she will give birth To a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel. Which means God with us. And when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. And he took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Over a hundred years ago on December the 17th, 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright made the first flight of the airplane out of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. It was a flight that only lasted uh, 12 seconds. Orville was the pilot. Wilbur was so excited that on the fifth attempt, they had, they had actually flown for the 12 seconds, that he hurried off to a nearby telegraph office to send a telegram to his family. And the telegram said, we have flown for 12 seconds. We will be home for Christmas. And so his sister Catherine received the telegram. And she was so excited that her, of her brother's success And she hurried to the local newspaper and she went to visit with the editor and she told the editor about what had happened, about the new flying machine and that it had successfully flown for 12 seconds and that her brothers would be home for Christmas and that she knew the editor would want to visit with them and and get a story. He'd want to interview them. Well, the editor listened to her and he, he promised her he'd put something in the paper about her brothers and he did on December the 19th of 1903 there in the local paper he had to turn to the sixth page but on the sixth page read the headlines right brothers home for Christmas he totally missed out on what Catherine was trying to say he missed out on the most important thing and that was the flight He missed out on that. And you know what? The same can be said for Joseph. Because sometimes you and I just miss out on Joseph. He's the forgotten one. He's the overlooked one. He's the afterthought in the Christmas story. And what Joseph experienced, and what Joseph did in his role as the earthly father of God's heavenly child, even though it's often overlooked. And he's usually at the end of the list of the cast of the Christmas cast. It's so significant. 
See, you and I, we, we know about the angels. The angels, they brought heavenly greetings. And we really know a lot about Mary and how Mary is saying such a holy song over the birth of, of her son. And we know that the wise men, they, they traveled a great distance and they visited with Herod and they, they escaped and brought gifts of value to the baby. And we know the wise men, I mean the shepherds, they were out in the fields tending the flocks. But they were heralded to come to see the miraculous birth of, in Bethlehem's manger. But what about Joseph? You know, there's no notable quotes from Joseph. He was silent. He never said a word. No words are attributed to Joseph. And even though Joseph, when you and I talk about those that were a part of the birth of our Lord, is often, unforgot, often forgotten and overlooked, you know, he was, he's irreplaceable. In the story of our Lord's birth. Because Joseph was used by God in an amazing way. And it was through Joseph that God came to earth. And it was through Joseph that Jesus was given his name. That he was called Jesus. Emmanuel. That God is with us. And just about everything that you and I know about Joseph is it's found in just a few verses in the gospel, especially here in Matthew in the first chapter. I mean, he had a job to do. He had a very significant job to do. And that was to care for God's Son. That was to raise Jesus as his own. But Joseph had a plan in his life. Joseph, he, he just had a, a simple life. And he had a plan for this life, just to live in the, the role of a carpenter. He had a plan to marry Mary and, and hope to have a family. And he sought to be a righteous and good person and, and to live in a godly way. But things changed. He was clearly disappointed when he discovered that Mary was with child. That she was pregnant. And then he had a really an internal debate. What should he do? How would he handle this situation? Would he leave Mary and call off the, the engagement? Would he subject her to public disgrace? Would he go through with the commitment of marriage? What would he do? It was an agonizing decision for Joseph because Joseph cared about Mary. He cared about her welfare. He cared about her standing in their culture. And the angel of the Lord visited him. And that angel revealed to Joseph that this was all part of God's plan. That God was sending his son and that Joseph would play an integral role in receiving God's Son. See, it was through his decision. Then he had to make a decision. He had to make a decision. Would he trust God? Would he obey God? Or would he turn his back on what God was asking him to do? What would he do? Ultimately, you and I, we know, Joseph made a decision to trust in God. And it was through his decision to trust in God that the gift of love was given to us. It was through his decision to trust in God that he gave the gift of love to Mary and they were united in union. And ultimately, you know what Joseph did? He gave the gift of love to God because he honored God. He trusted God. He respected God and what God was doing. 
and how God would use Joseph. Joseph's love was a tenacious kind of love. And his tenacious love is often forgotten when we tell the Christmas story. It's often overlooked. But Joseph teaches us the value of love. He teaches the value of love by first loving God. By loving Jesus, God's Son. By loving Mary. And ultimately, He teaches us the value of love because He loved us and was willing to be used by God so that you and I may know Jesus Christ, the sovereign Lord and Savior of our lives. He was a righteous man of mercy. And the mercy he demonstrated is still is extended to us today. And so what can we learn from Joseph? And that's simply this. To trust God. You know, when our dreams are shattered. When our expectations are changed. When our plans do not go at all like we expected them to go. Or, or how we had hoped. We can trust God. And when we trust God, we then allow the gift of His love to touch our lives and to change us and encourage us and benefit us and to draw us closer to Him through His Son. Dan was a father of three children. And he had a wife. Dan had um, been looking for employment and He had secured employment with a large corporation company in the local city. And things were going pretty well. There had been several lean months, but finally things were beginning to change and the family was getting back on their feet. And then the word came that this company was relocating. And it was devastating news to the economic culture of that community. People that had worked for the company a long time were extended offered to relocate and, and they, many of them chose. But Dan wasn't one of those that was offered opportunity to relocate. So before Thanksgiving, he found himself without employment. And the town began to suffer a great deal. The service industry was wiped out. No one could afford to hire anything done. The retail stores were not hiring. I mean, they they were just struggling themselves. And there in the heart of the community was a vacated facility. And things looked pretty bleak for Dan and for his family, especially that Christmas. Dan was able to eat by. He he found some odd jobs and there was just enough money to to get by, to keep the power on, the water running and Provided just enough food for the family. But Thanksgiving was nearing and family gathered to talk about how they would prepare for Christmas. What would they do this year? So they decided that after Thanksgiving, they would celebrate Christmas. And they would do it in the most cost effective way they could. This year, everybody understood the gifts were to be homemade. There wasn't money for wrapping paper, so they would just use newspaper and and circulars and the funny papers. They got busy. They had to be creative because they wanted to hide the gifts they were creating for each other and the family from them. And so things were done in secret in the middle of the night and in the back of closets. They created decorations that did not cost anything from things that they had there at the house. And with all the preparations made for Christmas, Christmas came. There was the tree, the homemade gifts wrapped in newspaper, and the family celebrated Christmas. They had put so much into Christmas that year. Well, eventually things got better for Dan and for his family. Dan found a job and and their normal routine began to surface again. But no one ever forgot that Christmas. And every year when the family would gather, they always talked about that Christmas. They never forgot 
that Christmas. That Christmas that took so much energy and creativity and hard work to accomplish. You know what? God did the very same thing for you and, and He did the very same thing for me when He made preparations for that very first Christmas. And He went through so, so much effort to make that first Christmas miraculously special beyond any human involvement in thought, in imagination. You know, a, a special Christmas, he made it such a special Christmas that it did not just last for a minute, but it has lasted for lifetimes through generations. So that you and I would never forget. So that that first Christmas would never be an afterthought. So it wouldn't be overlooked. And he used Joseph. He used Joseph in a mighty way to help you and to help me to receive the gift of His love in His Son, Jesus Christ, as our Savior and as our Lord. So not only may we be touched by His love, transformed by His love, but so that you and I as his sons and daughters may demonstrate, show, and share his love. Lord, forgive us when we have forgotten the amazing meaning of, your, of that first Christmas. Forgive us when we have overlooked Joseph's tenacious love and all that Joseph went through. Father, today, help us to know and value the gift of your love. And help us to give the gift of your love to others. In loving you. And in loving others as ourselves. It's in the holy name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ we pray. And together we say, Amen. Amen. This morning our closing song is Love Came Down at Christmas. It's not a song we often sing. But love did come down at Christmas to touch and transform our world. This morning I offer to you this invitation. And that is, if you'd like to come to a part of this church family, we'd love to receive you here. You're invited to come on your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord of your life. If you've never been baptized, we invite you to be baptized. You also come on and transfer of your membership from another church family to this church family. We'd love to receive you on that way. Pastor Lee and I are here, and if you feel led to be prayed with, we'd love to pray with you. Or if you simply like to pray by yourself at the altar, the altar is here for you. But we invite you to come if you feel led. And I invite you to stand and join with us as we sing together hymn number 242, Love Came Down at Christmas.
so glad to introduce to you to your newest church members. This is Margaret and Fred Limley. They are transferring their membership. They're Texans. Or are you native Texans? No. no. But anyway, they're coming from Texas. They are coming from McKinney, from the First United Methodist Church of McKinney, Texas. And so we are so happy to welcome you here. And I, I just ask you the simple question. We uphold this church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. We're glad you're here. Will you welcome them here? Will you show, give them a hand? And Fred and Margaret are going to be in the back with Pastor Lee and myself. Please come by and shake their hand and hug their neck and make sure they feel welcome here. We're, we're glad you're here. And as you go forth, remember to do as Pastor Lee asked, to, to lift up the, the service this week for persons with special needs and also to remember those that... Um, may not have the same expectation of Christmas this year, and, and we will have a service uh, on, sep- on December the 21st, which is the longest night of the year, and for persons that may, may be having a hard time this Christmas. But we're glad that you're here, and know that our God, who's God, who's faithful, as He gives to us the gift of His love, He gives to us the gift of faith, knowing that He's faithful in our past, He's faithful in this present moment, and He's faithful for our future. Don't just come to church but be the church. God bless you.